So the problem is we've got a Gaussian profile defined by this equation and we need to figure out how we can calculate what is called the full width at half a maximum dependent on delta in some form. So what we need to do is now calculate where this line profile has its half maximum values. So if you roughly know how a Gaussian profile looks like, you can easily sketch that. And you will have, in this case, the intensity against lambda. And the Gaussian profile will look something like this with its peak at lambda zero. Now, where will this uh, function have its highest peak? It will have its highest peak at lambda zero, and you can see the maximum of i will be at lambda zero. If you just insert four lambda, lambda zero in this equation, you'll see that will give you zero, the entire exponent will be zero, and therefore the entire thing will become i0. So you know the maximum of this function is i0. So what we're looking for now is at half maximum. So we're looking at where this function has values, which is i0 half. So i0 half equals i0 and e to the minus lambda minus lambda zero squared over two delta squared. So you can see already at this point, quite quickly, that the i zero is irrelevant, that cancels out, and we can get rid of the exponent by logging both sides, and we've got ln of half equals minus lambda minus lambda zero squared over two delta squared. So we know already ln 1 half from the log rules is going to be ln 2 with a minus in front. These two minus signs cancel. I can now continue with the rearrangement. So this will then become lambda minus lambda 0 squared equals ln of 2 times 2 delta squared don't have to uh, factor that out. I can easily just pull the square root on both sides. And I've got lambda minus lambda 0 equals square root ln 2 times 2 delta squared. Bear in mind, you're pulling the square root. Therefore, you'll get two answers, plus and minus. Now, that means you'll also get an answer as lambda 1 and lambda 2. So lambda 1 uh, or lambda 2 will be therefore lambda 0 plus or minus and we can pull the delta out so that's going to be delta and we've got ln 2 times 2 in here. Now the lambda 1 and 2 will be in here these appropriate values lambda 1 and lambda 2. So the full width at half maximum is therefore going to be the full width at half maximum is going to be equal to lambda 2 minus lambda 1. And if I put that in here, I'm going to get lambda 0 plus the delta ln 2 times 2, and I'm going to subtract away lambda 0. Um, the minus part of this, so minus this, but because it's minus here, it will become a plus again here, square root ln 2 times 2 in the square root. The lambdas cancel out, so the full width half maximum relationship to the delta doesn't depend on the actual wavelength, and we'll end up with the full width at half maximum being twice ln 2 times 2 and times the delta. And if you put that in the pocket calculator, you'll see that this term is roughly 2.35. So the whole thing is the full width half maximum relates to the delta by a factor of 2.35.
which makes sense if you remember that the delta is something closely linked to standard deviation which will probably be in this range and the full width half maximum is the full width so it's going to be definitely a factor of two larger if not maybe even three and we've calculated that the value that we've got is actually the full width half maximum is 2.35 times the delta.